You can please be seated. Good evening and welcome. I'm Neil Gooderman, Dean of the School of Social Service Administration here at the University of Chicago. It's my great pleasure and honor to welcome you to the hooding ceremony for the 2016 graduates of SSA. <clears throat> I'm delighted to see so many SSA graduates, family, friends, loved ones, here to honor our graduates this evening. The hooding ceremony is one of several ceremonial and celebratory events that may mark the completion of graduate studies and it dates back to the earliest traditions of our first universities. The ceremony whereby a member of SSA's faculty will place a hood over the graduating student provides a tangible symbol of conferring upon and thereby passing on the learning and accomplishment from teacher to student and now graduate. The ceremony represents a transition moment from student to graduate and to new professional social work colleague. Graduates, you might remember that when you arrived a little while back at SSA's orientation, I noted that you were passing an important threshold by coming to us to start the next phase of your professional development as social workers in training. Today's hooding ceremony and tomorrow's graduation represents another such threshold for you. The natural tendency is to think of graduation as an endpoint and understandably so, uh, now that you have all finished your final assignments. Is that right? <laughs> yes? Yeah, <laughs> good, okay, good. I'm relieved. And now that each of you has completed what we call a terminal professional degree, sorry about that language, that's pretty ominous. But perhaps like all transitions though, this moment is equally, or I would like to emphasize more importantly, a beginning for you. Indeed, you're on another threshold moment, about to embark upon what we hope and expect will become a fulfilling, enriching, and yes, challenging career as social workers. You've each courageously chosen the difficult path, the path that most don't care to, or perhaps even fear to tread, taking upon your professional shoulders some of our society's most complicated and difficult challenges. Each of you, in your own way, has drawn that courage from that courage and boldness during your time here and through your classroom studies, your fieldwork experiences, and in engaging conversations with faculty and peers at SSA. And then you channeled it and you fashioned it into your developing professional social work acumen. Along the way, we professors, colleagues, and supporters have strived to equip you with some knowledge, perspectives, skills, and ways of professionally tapping, or as we like to say, use of yourself as a vehicle to promote change, to advance equity, to advance social justice, to advance compassionate treatment of one another. Along the way, your teachers have strived to challenge you, and in return, you've challenged us and taught us, bringing out and considering different perspectives, different viewpoints, challenging assumptions, and drawing on evidence and rigorous thinking to shape your professional acumen. And along the way, we've encouraged you to be self-reflective about your work, to not merely act out of the certainty of your convictions, but also to accompany with that a self-awareness, a balanced mix of commitment to the cause with the humility that we're in this together, and that the world is a complicated place. In that self-reflectiveness, we have the opportunity to gain a greater perspective, add depth, and thus a greater impact in our work, looking beyond the obvious. After all, things are not always as they first appear. And SSA as a school was forged on the view that impactful social work rests on rigorous, evidence-based, and deep and evolving understandings of social problems and that we must work to dig deeper to have more substantive impact. Just a few days ago, I had the serendipitous opportunity 
to sit and share a meal with those who were sitting actually in your shoes exactly 50 years ago. Uh, this is the SSA alumni class of 1966. And I listened to them talk about what's uh, stayed the same and what's changed. And I couldn't help wondering what it might be like if and when you come back together in 50 years to reflect on your professional journeys, about your experiences, and the role that your SSA education has played along the way. I honestly found myself wishing that I had a tape recorder uh, because their memories uh, came vividly flooding back as they were talking in the conversation. They shared memories of their very first professors, their favorite professors, of their first clients. They remembered the names of their first clients, the agencies that they worked in, stories of their fieldwork supervisors, and of the specific streets and the cross streets and intersections that they traveled, and even the chairs that they sat in at SSA, which, by the way, are the same chairs you sat in. <laughs> One story that stood out most to me was recalled by an alumna who remembered that when she asked what she should do with her first client, her professor told her, start where the client is. Does that sound familiar? Um, well, we do a little bit of that too. And then she said, uh, when her teacher, uh, she went on to say, and she was telling the story, that her teacher said, start where the client is, but you won't really know what that means for at least five years from now. Well, she remembered that, that that comment, it really stuck with her, and at the time she said it really threw her off balance. And, um, but then she said, she wanted to say five years later, uh, she actually felt compelled to call up her teacher on the phone and say, do you remember that comment that you said about not understanding start where the client is for at least five years? Well, I have to tell you, I now know what you mean. Something so seemingly simple as, start where the client is, well, is not actually so simple. And it requires both time and experience and continued work and learning to ultimately yield a more developed perspective to better understand in practice what starting where the client actually means. I've been uh, personally reflecting on something related to this. <clears throat> That is how time and timing and openness to learning and growth and change and transformation happen in different ways and at different paces with different clock speeds. This seems especially important in the age of Twitter and, and Facebook uh, and um, texting, which my kids do all the time, too much. And um, especially because we have an acutely uh, developed sense of the immediacy about things now where we see things in the moment which can look like, ah, that's it, now I know what the problem is. And we can thus forge forth and rush to solve the problem. And while we might get a rush out of rushing toward a more just and humane future, it seems to me that the reality is that people and people's problems and people's solutions work and grow and change at people's speeds, not at the speed of the internet. And similarly, as the alumna spoke, your professional growth will continue much after you leave SSA. So that, you know, as we say, you're not fully baked yet. So although we tell you that you're completing a terminal degree, you're really still expanding and growing and learning. And that too is part of the professionalism that we hope you'll always carry forward. Your ongoing openness and commitment to reflective practice. So tonight and this weekend might mark the end of your degreed learning at SSA but it's also just a beginning. We're enormously proud of your work and commitments, and we know that your continued growth will be sustained and nurtured by the support of many others. Indeed, many of those who will support you and whom you will support in return are probably right here tonight in Rockefeller Chapel. So we want to acknowledge that this is not just an important threshold for you each as individuals, but rather it's a shared threshold, one that when passed through together makes it more possible to carry for the good work and the difficult work that you'll do and that we'll continue to do with you. I should say that you're especially fortunate as you have the benefit of an inspiring uh, alumni community of SSA who also are eager to support you along the way and whom you'll now have the chance to support. We hope that indeed you'll stay engaged with us as a school, as a community, 
as lifelong colleagues and learners and as partners in the vital work that we all do. And I hope that you'll come back to us in five years, maybe even 50, uh, and tell us what your contributions have been and the new and deeper perspectives that you've attained along the way in service to others. Congratulations to all of you as you pass through this important threshold this evening. So now I'm honored and delighted to welcome Rick Estrada, who will deliver this evening's remarks. Rick is a 1993 alum of SSA, and he has devoted his entire professional career in service to those most vulnerable. Since 2011, Rick served as the, has served as the president and chief executive officer of Metropolitan Family Services, one of the Chicago's oldest and largest human services agencies. Under Rick's leadership, Metropolitan Family Services has grown to serve more than 68,000 people here in Chicago. Among many of his efforts, Rick secured funding to start an early childhood facility on the city's southwest side. And last year, he introduced the campaign to empower families, a bold initiative that aims to enable Metropolitan Family Services to serve 100,000 families by the year 2020. Rick's expertise and leadership skills have been recognized and widely sought out. He's been appointed to serve on the Board of Trustees of the University of Illinois. He's a board member of the Woods Fund of Chicago and serves on the Chicago Early Learning Executive Council. And he's also been the recipient of numerous awards, including Leadership Greater Chicago's 2013 Distinguished Fellow Award, the City Club of Chicago's Distinguished Social Leadership Award, and we're especially proud that Rick was our inaugural recipient of SSA's 2014 Social Impact Award, which honors an alum who's excelled demonstrating outstanding leadership, a commitment to social change, and creativity in furthering our field through their work. I am seriously honored and delighted to consider Rick a friend and a partner. Would you please welcome Rick Estrada to the podium. The one thing you ought to be glad for with this heat is that I, I was told earlier I had prepared about a 45-minute speech, and they said, due to the heat, you got to bring it down to about 20 minutes. I'm just kidding. It'll be shorter than that. Uh, <laughs> so I want to first thank uh, Dean Guterman for this privilege to be here today. It is uh, just terrific to see all your faces. When I graduated in 1993, I mean, I am so proud and happy for every single one of you, but there were only two men of color in the class. I'm happy to see that there's a little bit more today. I was the one brown guy and uh, uh, Representative Ken Duncan was the African American guy. Uh, so that was it. We were the two guys and we had a, a terrific class and I'll tell you a little bit more about them anyway. But uh, SSA class of 2016, on behalf of the 8,700 SSA alumni living in all of our 50 states and 30 countries around the world, I congratulate you and thank you for continuing this legacy of excellence. I want to welcome you to this network, and I implore you to use it. SSA alums are making change all across the globe. That's clear, but in Chicago and Illinois, my classmate, a woman named Andy Durkin, recently led a group of 45 nonprofit organizations in a breach of contract lawsuit against the state of Illinois and on behalf of nonprofits. Now it's grown to 68. Regardless of where people stand politically, states have to honor contracts or many services that are dear and necessary in our communities will come to a screeching halt. People, people we care about, become the collateral damage. My point here is really not about the politics, it's, but it's about that SSA alums are leading, and Andy is just one example. When she took some heat uh, in establishing that lawsuit, I stepped in and gently offered some different perspective on her behalf and helped silence some of the critics. SSA people work together for good. Finally, Andy asked me to co-sign an op-ed in Crane Chicago Business, and I did. We took a little heat for that one as well. Together, we helped bring awareness to this issue in ways that could never have been achieved with advocacy alone. Again, SSA alums work together I can tell you of countless examples, but you just need to embrace it as a reality and leverage it when it's your turn to use your power. As an alumnus of this noble and exemplary institution, I am proud and happy to be here today. 
I hope you share the same sense of pride and excitement. You really earned it. You are highly motivated. You are equipped to succeed. You are graduates of a top three uh, ranked social work in the country. The classes you've taken, the projects, internships that you have worked on have empowered you. These are your springboards, and I want you all to take a bow and give yourselves a round of applause. A little louder. Families, welcome too. This is off script, but on the networking side, as your career progresses, the best jobs are never on the sites. They're never out there. Uh, you, just, you just need to help build this network, and you will get some of these best jobs. There's a whole lot that I want to share, and there's very little time to do it, so I'm going to get going with this. Uh, the last time I was in this magnificent building was 2012, when two students that I recommended for entry into this program graduated. I want you to know that they both have terrific careers. One guy is helping create and evaluate workforce programs in our region, and the young woman is helping immigrants find opportunities and working towards policy change. Just a little bit about me that uh, Neil didn't talk about, although my dad would have been really proud on Father's Day with everything you said. Uh, like many of you, my start was at the ground level. My, in my second year placement here, I was at an organization called United Charities. Today, that organization is known as Metropolitan Family Service, the oldest nonprofit in the state of Illinois, making us 158 years young, and it's the organization I lead today. The road was relatively long, but it started here at SSA and here at Rockefeller Chapel. I was so fortunate to learn and be trained and be inspired by, by here at SSA by people you know well. Some of these people you know well, many of them are not here, but Gene Marsh, Irving Spurgle, Melissa Roderick, Pastora, San Juan, Cafferty, Dodie Norton, just to name a few. Uh, it is inspiring to learn about the continuing work of our faculty and our students. I'm grateful to all of you to continue, for continuing their legacies. In the future, some of you will be at this stage like I am today, and you will acknowledge all the faculty that I missed because they're all terrific. Today, I want to offer a little bit of advice. You might call it life perspective that I think is valuable and could be used not only in this setting, but in any setting. Uh, many young students, at the advice of their professors and field instructors, now come to me and want to know about the path to being the CEO of this major non for profit And I really, what I tell them is the reality is I, I don't know. Um, a little luck, probably. Some intention and talent, uh, maybe. Uh, but lots of hard work, absolutely, definitely. Uh, but I think three things that have paved my way, and I assume for many of, of my colleagues, uh, I want to share with you. So number one, you should dare to be bold. Take some risks. As, accept failure as a part of success. Again, take some risks. We are living and learning human beings, and we must take chances in order to grow. Be forgiving of the mistakes that you make, and be forgiving of the mistakes that other people make around you. This is how we learn. One of the things I always say is be easy to disagree with. When it's your turn to lead, your past mistakes will help you perhaps more than your successes. So I want to, it encourages fresh thinking and innovation. Now, if your colleagues or even your children are afraid to disappoint you, it'll be difficult for them to take a risk, and therefore the innovation process cannot be nurtured. Number two, I want you to seek mentors. That's easy to say but you need to constantly and actively seek mentors. I've been blessed to have many, many mentors in my life from my father and family when I was young. Uh, in college, I had something called a spiritual advisor. I've had a job coach, a life coach, and many others along the way. At SSA, it was a guy named Irving Spurgle. Some leaders advocate that you seek a personal board of directors, and that's essentially a group of people that will advise and provide wisdom, whatever you call them. Just find them and make sure you are actively seeking them. Number three, stay hopeful and keep a positive attitude. So when describing you, what people say, that person's glass is always half full, even when you know it's empty. As an employer, I know there are many, many talented people, especially at the University of Chicago School of Social Service Administration. But the people that have great attitudes, in addition to great skill and expertise, are special. Uh, they know how to ask for help and therefore have lots of mentors. 
People want to be around them because they work hard, aren't afraid to go for it, have perspective, and are happy. Keep a positive attitude, especially around your family in the back. That can be even harder. But at the end of the day, they're guaranteed to be among the people that are going to stay with you for the rest of your life. So beginning today, thank your family for all the sacrifices and headaches and heartaches that you've cost them and you know you have. Uh, in following this advice, I've been blessed with an amazing career, a loving family that has enabled me to do the passionate work that I love, to travel the world, to earn a great living. Understand that these three pieces of advice I offer you are interrelated and, are provide, and provide the greatest benefit when used simultaneously. So I want to end with a story. Um, Dr. Martin Luther King once said, life's most persistent and urgent qu question is, what are you doing for others? It, it essentially epitomizes our profession. With that in mind, I, I wrote a reflection in 2008, and this is just an excerpt, and I'll try to keep it short. Uh, but 2008 was one of the most important years of my life. It was, I was named a, an American Marshall Memorial Fellow. That's, uh, one, I was one of just 50 young Americans across the country to be named to this fellowship. So I traveled to Europe, five countries, to learn about the importance of the transatlantic relationship. Kind of felt good about myself and kind of patted myself in the back, had met with important people, diplomats, had great food, great drink. At the end of the day, I left my wife and my two little girls at home and always felt a little guilty about that. Uh, but for a social worker from one of Chicago's hoods, uh, it was really an affirming experience. I could hold my own with some of the best and brightest Americans from across the country and across Europe, and I was flying high. However, it was a later trip in that same year that was even more meaningful. In 2008, I was invited to join a delegation to Ethiopia on a relief trip that turned out to be both the most challenging experience and at the same time maybe the most meaningful experience of my life. I decided, I initially turned it down. I, I was already guilty because I'd left on that other trip, but my wife stepped in and said, uh, you went on that fancy trip. You need, now need to do this one. It's a lot more important and meaningful. So, you know, a little marrow advice, listen to your partner. Um, so I went. Uh, the Ethiopia I expected was the one most Americans have seen on television or read in their papers. Uh, with grim images of children, sometimes starving. The Ethiopia I discovered was a country that is both beautiful and atrocious. Its people are warm, generous, smart, courageous, and extremely proud of their age, a, ancient legacy as a cradle of humanity, important to both early Islam and Christianity, their ties to Solomon, and their current path to a most, more prosperous future. I witnessed true transformation there, in their many water, farming, development, and health efforts. In their capital, Addis Ababa, I had the most difficult experience of my life, and this is the final point I want to make. And it's, uh, we came to the, uh, one of Mother Teresa's centers for the sick, dying, and destitute. And so the name kind of says it all. But we just arrived there, and a woman, Sister Benedicta, essentially greeted us at the front and said, hey, stop, um, look into their eyes, and do not feel sorry for them. Allow yourself to see their dignity. They have a lot to offer, and you're not here to save them. And with that, she just led us into the uh, infirmary, what essentially was a big kind of hospital. A thousand people were there in, in rooms that looked like huge wards. And uh, e immediately, I was struck by this feeling, this sensation. It wasn't fear, and it wasn't curiosity. You couldn't describe it as panic or hypervigilance, but it really was a combination of them all that turned my stomach into a knot. As we walked into these large wards, you couldn't help but uh, noticing the incense everywhere, and it was there to mask all the smells, the human smells that I probably shouldn't describe, but medicine, flesh, and illness, and, and I simply just wanted to run. And I always thought of myself as somebody that was courageous and strong and spiritual and all those positive attributes that we give ourselves but that day and that place, that notion was challenged forever. Uh, I, was, I was afraid and I, and I wanted to run. As, as the minutes passed, I, I surprisingly became more comfortable with the sight of sickness and the presence of death all around. And like the uh, sister superior there said, I actually allowed myself to look into the people's eyes and started to see the love that she talked about. 
I'll always remember this uh, young man who at the time was about, I, I assume my age, and had a young boy. And this boy had this um, skin disease that was incurable and essentially made his face look monstrous, just completely deformed and something that, uh, that you would really only see in a magazine. Uh, but this uh, young boy, the scariest part of the experience to me was he, they just told us that he has this incurable disease and so this boy is happy and jumping around and he's going around and shaking everybody's hands and he's coming to me. And I'm like, I, I don't want to shake, I, I just didn't want to shake his hand, but I did. I shook his hand and then the dad picked him up and just kind of hugged him, caressed him, and it was the, the truest form of courage and love that I've seen at this point. So this story is really not about me and this experience. This story is more about you. That was just two months in the life of one SSA-trained social worker. Uh, while the experience continues to live in me and kind of feed the work that I do, really it's about what is driving you, what is your passion, and what's going to forge your work and move you forward. Um, we have similar injustices happening just blocks from here. There are injustices that are happening in your towns, in your neighborhoods, in your cities, and in your countries, and you need to figure out what it is that's going to drive you to create some change. So SSA prepared you for this terrific career you're about to have with a fancy, terrific degree, but it's up to you to figure out what to do with it. Remember, life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? I'll end where I started. Three pieces of advice. Take a chance and follow your dreams. Mistakes will be made, but they make the best stories anyway. Two, ask for wisdom and help constantly. It is a sign of strength, not weakness. Keep the faith in yourself and in the people you love. Finally, if you want to be successful in this very, very challenging field, always be positive. Remember, there is good and there is love in the world, and it begins with you. So I want to thank you for your attention and for the honor of addressing you today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rick, for those very thoughtful words of guidance for us. SSA is a place of, full of outstanding and dedicated faculty members and teachers, and now it's my great honor to present this year's faculty award, the Award for Excellence in Doctoral Student Mentoring at SSA. This is a student-nominated award which honors and recognizes one faculty member each year who provides especially meritorious intellectual and professional mentoring guidance and education to our doctoral students. This year's recipient of the Award for Excellence in Doctoral Student Mentoring at SSA is Associate Professor Jennifer Mosley. Professor Mosley was enthusiastically, yes. Come on up. Professor Mosley was enthusiastically nominated for this award by doctoral students who especially lauded her for her generosity of time and wisdom for her no-nonsense mentoring guidance and feedback in shaping the early careers of our PhD students. Jennifer, congratulations, and please join me in congratulating her. Okay, now I invite SSA's Dean of Students, Celia Bergman, to the podium. Dean Bergman, along with SSA Alumni Association President Allison Weston, will present this year's Student Honor Awards. Dean Bergman. Thank you, Dean Guterman. At this time, it gives me great honor to present to you two students who are the recipients of our Distinguished Student Awards for 2015-16. SSA faculty and field instructors were invited to submit nominations for each award, and a committee of administrators and faculty made the final selections. Each student will receive a certificate and a $500 prize. <laughs> At this time, I would like to ask SSA Alumni Association President Allison Weston to come forward and assist with presenting these awards. Allison will also be hooding each award recipient.
The first award is the Sonia G. Bears Honor Award, given to a graduating master's degree student for outstanding work with special consideration given to promise of future achievement in the field of services to older adults. Marvin Bears, an SSA graduate, initiated this award in 1977 in honor of his mother. This year's award goes to Kirsten Harms. Kirsten, will you please join Allison on the stage? Kirsten received her Bachelor of Social Work in 2014 from Trinity Christian College, where she also minored in political science. She entered our accelerated program in spring 2015. At her field placement with the U.S. Administration on Aging, Kirsten has led multiple projects, including completing detailed reviews of state policies and procedures related to the first ever final rule on long-term care ombudsman programs. Her work has offered insight to federal staff and state leaders regarding aging services priorities. Congratulations, Kirsten, on receiving the Sonia Beers Honor Award. The next award is the Solomon O. Lichter Memorial Prize, given to graduating master's degree students for scholarship and professional leadership. The family, friends, and colleagues of Solomon O. Lichter, who received his master's degree from SSA in 1941, established this memorial. Mr. Lichter worked for the Jewish Family and Community Services and later served as executive director of scholarship and guidance. He was known for his creative and innovative approach to social work practice and for his love for teaching. This year's Solomon O. Lichter Memorial Prize goes to Christine Craig. Christine, will you please join Allison? Christine graduated with honors from Kalamazoo College in 2006 with a Bachelor of Arts in Political Science. During her undergraduate program, she also conducted prison research in Quito, Ecuador, as well as interned at a human rights-focused immigration law firm. Christine entered SSA after working as a program director at Just Detention International in Los Angeles, California. While at SSA, Christine has worked as an RA for Professor Matt Epperson, where she has been instrumental in a study on the life course of people with serious mental illnesses who are involved in the criminal justice system. She will be the second author on the first publication to come out of this study. Additionally, for two years, Christine has been a leader of Justice Works, an SGA student group focused on the intersections of social work and criminal justice. Under Christine's leadership, Justice Works has increased in size, scope, and reach. Congratulations, Christine. I'd now like to introduce Ms. Jenny Mead, Director of School Social Work at SSA who will commence with the reading of the names of this year's spring graduates in our master's program. SSA faculty, whose names are listed in your program, will hood the graduates. Jenny? Dean Guterman, SSA staff and faculty, honored guests. It is my distinct privilege and honor to you tonight to present to you tonight the candidates for the master's degree from the School of Social Service Administration at the University of Chicago, the class of 2016. As we proceed with this evening's hooding ceremony, we do request that we withhold our applause and recognition until all of our students have been hooded. Thank you.
Stephanie, oops. Stephanie Hamilton Aaron. <laughs> Nadia Amina Abbas. Halima Abdul Karim. <laughs> Mudiha Abed. <laughs> Mujtaba Ahmed. Sheffy Alexander. <laughs> Diana Shireen Ali. <laughs> Muhammad Al Saidi. Jordan Anderson. <laughs> Lisa Marie Diaz Andrews. <laughs> Casey Lee Anthony. Jasmine Amber Atwell. <laughs> Fatima Avellan Lucana. <laughs> Mariah Taggart Balaban. Umritha Kaur Bamra. <laughs> Cassandra Deneen Barfield. Patrice Diana Bell Washington. <laughs> Naja Java Javed Bati. Olivia Blocker. <laughs> Margaret Lynn Borziak. Zul Marie Bausquez. <laughs> Anne Marie Boyd. <laughs> D 
Demi Marie Brancato. Deborah King Bridges. Morna Rose Brothers. Michelle Nicole Grace Brown. Kyle Patrick Bullock. <laughs> Luli Buxton. Constance Victoria Calise. Yvonne Marie Cardenas. Jessica Cardath. <laughs> Fiona Catherine Carey. <laughs> Sonia Chaudhry. Stephanie Christine Cheery. <laughs> Nicole Cherillo. <laughs> Joshua S. Clark. Catherine Clark. Sarah Lindsay Cope. Karen Ann Crow. Catherine Rose Diano. Bridget Mary Davis. Yvonne Ashley Davis. <laughs> Alyssa De Los Reyes.
Anne Healy Ekman. Lisa Elliott. Lauren Elise Emmerich. Emma Epstein. Gregory Bruce Erickson. Juliana Lee Estel. Kristen Lynn Ethier. Savannah Sav Felix. Clara Enid Freeman. Alexandra Farah Friend. <laughs> Megum Ann Freitag. <laughs> Maddie Rachel Friedman. Peter Fritsch. <laughs> Rose Aaron Gallagher. <laughs> Nancy Galvez. Laura Elizabeth Gaudet. <laughs> Eleni Margareta Gaveras. <laughs> Fasul Gias. Emily Gill. <laughs> Katrina Michelle Gorman. Kelly Lynn Graves.
Katherine Shannon Greeley. Chloe Shelley Grimaud. Andrea Karina Haydar. Kaylin Marlowe Hall. Miriam Lisa Hauser. Sherilyn Hia. Laura Marie Hincapie. Belitza Anis Hirani. Emmanuel Jackson. Andre Romand Johnson. Misha Lynette Jones. <laughs> Candice Alora Jones. Julia Elizabeth Webster Jones. <laughs> Caitlin Annalise Jones. Inga Karasavika. <laughs> Seville Kemak Shalan. Kristen Chambers Kennedy. <laughs> Alexander Valiency Kent. Theodora Kumatsakis. <laughs> Kevin Morris Langson. Brianna Monet Lawrence. <laughs> 
Laura Elizabeth Lazar. Vina Lee. G. Lee. Jeanette Lee. <laughs> Madeline Lee. Sarah Elizabeth Levy. <laughs> Shirley Yuanjua Lee. Nina Isadora Limbeck. <laughs> Shannon Mary Lindstad. Laura Angeline Lanier. <laughs> Diana Lopez. Deidre Django Lothrop. <laughs> Morgan Lyons. Sarah McGuire. <laughs> Catherine Jane Mattison. <laughs> Jared Kent McBride. Elizabeth McConnell. <laughs> Lauren McCrary. <laughs> Patricia McDaniel. Tessa Garcia McEwen. <laughs> Megan Kelly Malloy.
Amelia Jane Minton. Dominique My Michael. Paige Elizabeth Moorhead. Sarah Fish Moskowitz. Eleanor Claire Mulshine. <laughs> Timothy Murakami. Herhinye Musalyelian. <laughs> Leah Elizabeth Nutso. <laughs> Chelsea Ann O'Neill. Chama Oyakechi Oyekwea. Sarah Emily Orlin. Scott Christopher Pasco. <laughs> Amaya Pawar. <laughs> Colette Peasley. Judith Nicole Finney. <laughs> Tamara Jo Polingo. Kayla Irene Polis. <laughs> Nicole Ray. <laughs> Casey Lauren Wright. Gladys Esther Reyes. <laughs> Annie Reynolds. <laughs> Catherine Ritchie.
Carlos Robles. Christina Rosales Scoggin. <laughs> Hannah Grace Rosenblatt. Jill Leanne Rigg. Jasmine Salas. Elizabeth Sanchez. <laughs> Sochi Sandoval. Rachel, Rachel Beth Schmidt. Adriana Skirto. Arthur Lee Shank. Tamara Bella Sharif. <laughs> Megan Marie Seberg. Luke Gerard Smith. <laughs> Vernon Lamont Smith II. <laughs> Julianne Orlansky Spat. Sarah Julia Spurgel. <laughs> Brooke Bond Stevenson. Shana Lee Stewart. <laughs> Krista Porn Soriachin. Jin Grutan. <laughs> Megan Thompson. <laughs> Cl
Claire Kendra Tobin. Ricardo Tavar Vega. <laughs> Kathleen Ann Valadez. <laughs> Francesca Maria Valentin. Joanna Rachel Varghese. Claire Walton Vincent. Amanda Joe Walker. <laughs> April Chanel Walker. <laughs> Nicholas Ryan Walker Craig. Be Young Wong. L Lola Wayne. Lou Wayne. Maxwell Brooks Walcott. <laughs> Danielle Mara Wolf. Nicole Marie Woodrick. <laughs> Anthony Dion Wright. Bloom Zangwill. Nora. <laughs> Nora, Catherine, Wynn, and Baby. Zangwill. <laughs> Kara Wells Zinni. <laughs> Yu Zang. Or 
Darwin Jew. My last little one. To Dean Neil Guterman, faculty, staff, parents, family, and friend, I present to you the 2016 candidates for the Masters of Arts degree of the University of Chicago School of Social Service Administration. Woo! Congratulations. It's, it's now my honor to announce the names of the graduating students who have earned the Doctor of Philosophy degree at SSA. These students have trained and made significant contributions to the academic discourse, scholarly research in the field of social work. Each of these students is being hooded by a faculty member of their dissertation committee. Adam Brown, who completed... Adam completed a, di a dissertation entitled Heterogeneity Among Juvenile Sexual Abusers, an Exploration of Crime Characteristics, Family Context, and Mental Health. Congratulations. <laughs> Amy Turnbull Carre. Amy completed a dissertation entitled Privatizing Chicago, the Politics of Urban Redevelopment in Public Housing Reform. Congratulations. <laughs> Kevin Tan. Kevin completed a dissertation entitled The Role of School Context on Aggression and Substance Abuse During Middle School, a Person-Oriented Developmental Approach. Congratulations, Kevin. Please stand and turn and face your guests so that your guests may applaud you. And in return, let us new graduates, social work colleagues all, take a moment to express our appreciation and gratitude for family and friends for the love and support they've provided to help us to reach this moment. This marks the closing of the hooding ceremony. Many, many congratulations.